network attacks and abuses. What is a network? A network is a collection of computers, servers, mainframes, network devices, peripherals, or other devices connected to one another to allow the sharing of data. The biggest example or the most famous example for a network is the internet. Different types of networks. There are the LAN, also known as a local area network, usually used in small businesses. WAN, a wide area network, usually used in an entire business or organization. Wireless local area network also, well, we all know what is wireless. And metropolitan area network is usually used across cities or big states. Different types of network attacks. Data modification, eavesdropping, identity spoofing, password based attacks, denial of service attack, man in the middle attack, compromise key attack, sniffer attack, and the application leg attack. So starting with the eavesdropping right this is basically where someone also known as the attacker is trying to gain access to your network communications they usually monitor your network traffic and try to decrypt or decipher your um they try to decrypt or decipher your information and they can usually use this information to put it out in the put it out in the open for people to see it so people could and also through e shopping they take your information and try to sell it. Right? After an attacker has read your data, obviously the next step is to alter it. People usually alter it to make you look bad or try to alter it to make you get in trouble, right? Also, if you are exchanging purchase requisitions, you do not want items, amounts, or billing information to be modified. This is like when you purchase something through Amazon, you don't want somebody to come in and modify your data so you can have wrong information. Right? Identity spoofing. Most network operating operating systems use the IP address of a computer to identify a valid entity. In certain cases, it is possible for an IP address to be falsely assumed. Identity spoofing, it is called. An, attack, an attacker might also use special programs to construct IP packets that appear to originate from valid addresses inside the corporate intranet. Right? People do this basically just to access the network and delete your data, modify your data, route the data to um, other people to hack it as you can see in the picture that i have when the internet is connected to the server right the attacker usually waits at the server for your ip address so they can take your identity and reroute it or delete it all right password based attacks all right older applications do not always protect identity information and it is passed through the network for validation. This might allow an eavesdropper, I already explained what an eavesdropper is, to gain access to the network by posing as a valid user. When an attacker finds a valid user account, the attacker has the same rights as a real user. This is basically somebody trying to hack into emails, Facebook, any kind of social media, or anything that they use. People also try to hack into the organization's head. Um, head office using the head person's um, IDs and stuff. Right? Denial of service attack, right? This attack prevents normal use of a computer or network by valid users. Right? This, what happens is that they randomize the attention of your interna internal information system staff. Right? So there doesn't this means that people don't really realize that you are being attacked using this method, right? Because what usually happens is that the attacker usually sends a diversion to to get away from the man in the middle, just as the net says, right? 
and Imana na medo this in attack or kill somebody between you and the person with whom you are communicating which causes the abnormal termination of behavior and control in your communication as you can see in the picture you see something crash out and you are searching the web for something to go right because you put it in the middle is basically just waiting for you to try to access it so they can reroute the computer network with traffic because when your computers are communicating at low levels this something is that's clear more the computers to might not be able older, to determine with whom they are exchanging data older models and this again usually happens in older it is easier to offer um, and updates access right? your network it, because and full it with and traffic with um, it still happens older but not as it used to up it in back in the days of right. let's say 2010 they can also block traffic right the compromise key attacks um, mostly everybody might have done um, decrypting and encrypting and stuff this is basically when you are trying to send a message over the internet or over any source of network somebody is trying to compromise your decryption key right and when somebody tries to gain access to your decryption key to get your information or the data that they're trying to send right they usually use this data that they acquire right to make additional keys right this when they make additional keys by decrypting your key the attacker is access to other secured communications within the network as well right the compromise key is actually the action when the attacker obtains the key right the sniffer attack a sniffer is an application device that can read, monitor, and capture network data exchanges and read network packets. If packets are not encrypted, a sniffer provides a full view of the data inside a packet. Right? Even if it is encapsulated, right, and they will still be sniffed unless they are encrypted and the attacker does not have the key. Right? That means the attacker does not have a compromised key. Right, as you can see in the picture, the attacker is right at the switch. The switches are where the hubs and the packets and everything run through to go to the internet. He's basically waiting there to capture and, modif and modify your information. Right, the application layer attack. This is also known as a DDoS, if some people don't know. Right, this targets application service by deliberately causing a fault in the server's operating system or application all right this results in the attacker gaining the ability to bypass normal access controls the attacker takes advantage of the situation gaining control of your application system systems or network and when somebody does this they can erase your data they can complete take over your system they could get all your credit card information all your personal information this is basically a very like one of the most dangerous types of attack right as you can see from the picture how they do it they take it from the internet and they bypass your router your ips your firewall your switch your cache and your web server to reach into the database server and try to take everything from you right different types of attack I'll briefly go through each one of them and if you would like to have more information about them please comment down below and I will like I will have a full link for all the different types of attacks okay so the first one is your passive attack all right this basically monitor monitors unencrypted traffic all right and looks for clear text passes and sensitive information that could be used in other types of attack attacks the active attack the attacker tries to bypass or breaks into secured system. This can be done through stealth, viruses, worms, or trojan attacks. Right? The distributed attack. This requires the adversary introduce codes such as a trojan horse or backdoor program. And I'm sure you have all probably heard about in those movies where people try to use the backdoor to get into um to get into organizations and companies. Right? The insider attack, this is basically somebody from inside within the organization or company, and normally an employee who is really bad and corrupted, right? They, um, 
they try to eavesdrop, steal or damage information or try to use or sell information. Right? The close-in attack involves someone attempting to get physically close to network components, data and systems in order to learn more about the network. Right? The phishing attack. In phishing, the hacker creates a fake website that looks exactly like a popular site such as the SBI bank or PayPal. Right? The efficient part of the attack is that the hacker sends an email message trying to trick the user into a link that leads to the fake site. And I'm sure everybody probably had, had that message on their phone where they, um, from the bank where they expect you to type in your password and stuff. And I hope that nobody falls for that. Right? The hijack attack, just as the word says, it's hijack. Hijack, a hacker takes over a session between you and another individual and disconnects the other individual from the communication. Right? The spoof attack. Spoof attack, the hacker modifies the source address of the packets that the person is sending to, right? This may be an attempt to bypass your firewall rules. Buffer overflow. A buffer overflow is an attack. The attacker sends more data to the application that is unexpected. This is what I was talking about before in um, one of the different types of attacks. Right, they try to fill your traffic so that the system has a abnormal shutdown. Right, the exploit attack in this type of attack, the attack, the attacker knows of a security program within the operating system, and they try to use that broken or weak link in the security system. Right, they try to use the vulnerability of the system so they can get in. Right, and password attacks is when a hacker tries to take a password stored in the account database or password protected files because um, for example there are some files or some applications you can use to keep your passwords so you usually download them create one big long password and within that application you store your other passwords all right thank you for listening